have a quorum. We'll call the meeting to order. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Hey, Mr. Alcorn. Mr. Alcorn, you went blank. You're up. He was just there. He was. <laughs> oh, well. We'll, uh, we'll come back to Mr. Alcorn. Uh, Mr. Iser was next. Okay, I have an a &R plan that hopefully you received. Yes, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll just go over it. Uh, it's the uh, Steve Lewis Subaru property now owned by Belize. They have three parcels that they've acquired over the years and they want to combine them all into one. So it's just a take three, three parcels, combine them into one so that when they do their, <coughs> excuse me, site plan review, you'll be just dealing with one lot rather than three. Okay. Are there any restrictions on any of the lots that are being combined? What do you mean by restrictions, Mike? Uh, previous site plan reviews that could carry over to the combined unit? I don't think so. One of the okay, parcels just... was part of the uh, Harbor Freight property. It was right. the, supposed to be the coffee roasting place. But that we cut that off via A&R a year or so ago. So there, there's nothing that's got any restrictions on it. That I, I just may remember the Harbor Freight thing. There was something about wetlands in the back. Yeah, uh, we, right? we went through we went through all that, made sure that everything was good to go. But that okay. they, I'm sure that lot had some kind of wetlands that okay. they'll be talking about when they come to you for site plan review. OK. OK, so. You, we have the main parcel, which has the building, the existing building and all uh, the majority of the parking. There's a parcel uh, westerly of the main parcel on Russell Street, which they acquired, I don't know, two, three years ago. Or they put they were parking vehicles down there. And then the parcel in the back, which could be the United States. He is facing espionage charges. His attorneys say, OK, who's talking to me? <laughs> um, right. And then the the third parcel is to the back. It's got the what the building that was supposed to be the the coffee roasting building, and I I'm I think they're going to use it for doing repairs while they uh, re tear down and re rebuild or or build new uh, the new dealership building. So there's th three parcels that are already in existence. We're just again combining them into one. Okay, yeah, pretty straightforward. Any comments from anybody? Questions? I, I just say, uh, Mike, to your concern, uh, nothing we do in land use, in this level of land use approval has any effect on Conservation Commission jurisdiction anyway. I'll make a motion to approve it as an ANR. I'll second. Any other discussion? If not, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Well, I don't think Mark is on, right, Bill? I do not see him. Okay. Motion passes 401 absent. All right. Thank you. I'll get in touch with you, Jim, so we can get it signed up. Okay. So and while I got your one last question, the uh, very small subdivision at 21 Lawrence Plain Road. The decision has been filed. I don't think the 20 days has run yet for the appeal period. But once that does and it gets recorded and I will put that information on the plan, do you want to see the plan um, before it gets signed or are you guys OK to just get it signed? Why don't you put it by us just to just just to cover all the bases? OK, Randy. sounds good. Okay. All right. As you know, soon as just. 
So, Randy, before you go, uh, I just sent you an email. We got some uh, uh, the new FEMA or the a link to the draft FEMA plans. Okay. Um, three of us had trouble getting into the first version. I was able to get into the latest version. I just got an email about that this morning. I thought you'd be interested in it as well. And Kayla, yeah, I, I, I did forward that to you as well. So you guys can take a look at it. Okay. Um, I just was not able, I had my, I just had my laptop and I was not able to actually see what they were doing on that. But um, hopefully with all the links we have, someone can find out what's actually happening. All right. I'll look at it in my office tomorrow. That's where my, best computers are and then uh, i'll let you know if anything exciting is there okay sounds good all yeah. right thank you if i wanted to get a paper a printout uh where would i go i have haven't a clue if i can get if i can access it joe i should be able to print something if i can i will do that and let you know yeah let me know I, i'll come to your office and pick it up because there are certain areas that uh just didn't make sense uh bill the wire always points out the s curve on route 47 as you enter north hadley or go north uh it's one side of the uh of the stream that exits the north hadley dam is in the floodplain and the other side is not and it's it just doesn't make sense uh was that the one you were questioning bill that's one, yes. There's a couple more. and well, Hopefully with the newer technology, they've got a better grasp on things, but we'll see. Yes, can they identify, uh, this is a question to Randy, uh, identify topography uh, and the number of feet or inches above sea level? They can. Yeah, they can do that. I mean, they've been able to do that for years from planes, Joe. Um, but it just depends on how much money they want to spend and how much time they want to spend trying to do it. Uh, and Google Earth isn't half bad. Their elevations are pretty reasonable. They're not spot on, but they're pretty close. So there's definitely technology out there that they could utilize okay. to get a better picture than what they have. Because to you guys' point about the, the S-curve, the flood level is probably 30 feet below the top of the bank there. And that seems to be a little outrageous to me that they're that far off. Yeah, exactly right. Because it went over the dam and backed up. And so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mr. Alcorn, are you ready? You're muted. Here we go. Um, I'm coming really informational and to let you guys know what we're doing and also to see if there's anything I should be concerned about. Uh, we're looking at, I'm with the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. Um, we're looking at, well, we actually have a purchase and sale agreement to buy uh, 300 Venture Way in Hadley. Um, and the deal is basically that Pearson would continue to occupy roughly 10,000 square feet on the first floor. Uh, we would own the rest of the building. The, the spaces would be clearly separated between Pearson and the school. Uh, and we would probably be working to occupy the second floor um, for the fall of next school year. The first floor, it's not as clear right now how we'll use it. There's different ways you might use it, but that's not really decided at this point. Um, and so I'm sure we're going to have to get a change of use to, to do this. Um, and so I'm interested in knowing what things we should be thinking about to get that. And should I be concerned that the, this wouldn't be somehow approved? I assume it would be approved, but I don't know what issues I should be thinking about. Um, or we also might at some point... Um, put a preschool into the first floor that's not decided, but it's something we're looking at. We also might try to do virtual Chinese education. It's not something else we might try to do the first floor. So there's a bunch of different things we might use the additional space for, um, but it's not decided yet. 
uh, we've been in the paper recently where people are concerned about how we don't have enough parking and stuff. And so th this would uh, help alleviate the parking situation. We would not be leaving the existing building. We would probably be moving either the middle school or the high school over to 300 Venture Way. Um, and we might move more after um, once we get complete access to the first floor. But right now, I think the, the focus is on probably the middle school, but it could be the high school as well. Um, and so it would be something like, for the sake of argument, 180 students would be going there. Um, there would be buses going in and out of the facility. Uh, there'd be parents dropping off kids. Um, and, and I mentioned this to some people and they said that you guys probably want to have some thought about traffic on uh, North Maple Street, I guess it is. Um, and, um, those are the, the major points. I'd be glad to answer qu any questions people have. It and, and and right now we have a purchase and sale agreement. We've been doing the due diligence uh, work. I've got lots of um, reports in the buildings like that. The expectation is we will finish the due diligence and secure the financing by March 20th. And the idea is that we will close in April. And then we try to uh, go out to bid on some construction stuff. Uh, we haven't done all the architectural work at this point just because I didn't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars without having the building locked in first. So, so that's most of it. Any questions? Yeah. Well, I guess first of all, I mean, obviously you your educational use, so you can pretty much move in whether we whether we like it or not. But I think it's a good move on your part to alleviate traffic off of Route 9 and move it to there because it'll be a lot less. But we still like to do, like to see some kind of a, uh, I'm not sure, I don't want to call it a traffic report because that may, it may not be the right word, but some kind of a traffic information of what's going to be, how many, you know, how many vehicles a day will be coming in and out of the place, et cetera, something like that. Um, as far as your use, yeah, you're, you're certainly permitted to do there. Um, and, you know, I'm sure the uh, early morning Route 9 traffic and mid-afternoon Route 9 traffic will be much <laughs> relieved to see what this, when this happens, because it's going to be a huge improvement. Yes. So that's, uh, thank you for that. Um, other questions from the board before I say any more? Well, I'll, uh, I'll raise one detailed question, which is, there's a bridge between 300 Venture Way and 400 Venture Way. And um, and depending upon who I talk to, there, there's doors that, that uh, you use to access it. And on the 300 Venture Way, our side of the building, they have the doors locked. You can get out of the bridge, but you can't go into the bridge without a key. On the 400 Venture Way side, they say they've been told that they have to leave the doors open. And they're concerned about security because they're concerned about our kids wandering over to their building and uh, creating a problem. We're concerned about their people coming over and, you know, seeing our kids and creating a problem. So I don't know what the rules are in terms of, uh, I, I understand that there, you have to be able to uh, have egresses from the bridge if you're in it, but I'm not sure whether you need to have access to the bridge uh, to go in, onto it. We we did not impose any conditions on the bridge at the time. Pearson owned both buildings, right? And then uh, when Pearson sold the um, what two hundred venture way, um, four hundred, four hundred, um, there was some confusion at the time, uh, in part because the lot lines were a little didn't have proper setbacks. Um, but that, that was never anything we imposed any condition on. Okay. If the fire department had a condition because they needed an extra egress, that would be something else. But I, doesn't sound like that's the case either. Well, I, what, what I'm told, and this is all anecdotal, is that they, at one point, um, sealed up the entrance, I think on the 400 venture way side and someone saw it, I'm not sure who, and said, you can't do that. And, and I guess, and I think that was because they the fire escape type thing, if someone was on it. But I'll, I'll take it up with the um, with the fire department and see whether they have thoughts on this or not. Okay. Yeah, you, you mentioned a purchase and sale. Does that mean you 
are going to be purchasing part of the building as a condominium? No, we're we're purchasing the entire building. It's it's really the um, there's a school, there's an educational foundation affiliated with the school, so the educational foundation is purchasing the entire building, and um, and the school will be a co-signer on the mortgage. Uh, we are then leasing back 10,000 square feet to Pearson. And so they have, um, they're, they're basically looking for other space in the area. And so they have an option be there for up to five years. And how do we handle the tax situation in town if uh, you're leasing it back to Pearson? The, they would pay the, the portion of the building that's owned, being used by Pearson would pay taxes based on the square footage that they have here. And, and apparently that's been this, this, the town policy. Um, I spoke to the, uh, I've forgotten the gentleman on the tax side, but apparently they did the same thing with, um, I, I think there's a church and business that's- um, yeah. you, you, when, when most Holy Redeemer during COVID was renting the parish center to the school because of some issues with, I, oh, I forgot what it was, but they the, the school was using part of the uh, Most Holy Redeemer Parish Center, not the not the uh, school, the uh, senior center was renting the parish center when they were building the new um, senior center, and the church paid partial taxes on the parish center for, out of five days a week when it was used by when it was being rented. Or there was some some formula they were using for that. No, the the assessor's office is aware of this. Yeah. So yes, they're and on top of it. Yes, and and they they're aware of it. They've described how it's done, and um and and there's precedent in the town in terms of how they're, they're talking. About, they're saying it would be prorated based on who's occupying a given uh, portion of space. What are, what are the school hours? Um, the school is eight thirty to th three for um, no, to three thirty for K and one, and it's um, eight thirty to four for um, uh, all the other grades, starting in second grade. Uh. So, a, a, a comment to the board. Uh, certainly, the Dover Amendment comes into play here, but I think we have to have a little bit more scrutiny because certainly, number one, the height of the building was is four stories, according to the fire chief, and that prompted us or prompted him to uh, attempt to buy a new fire truck because that building was not able to be reached by the present fire truck or ladder truck. So we have to be aware of certain things and, and we have to have certain controls. So uh, we should play it. We should have a little bit more scrutiny. And the other thing was the traffic. Uh, we, we should have looked a little bit more closely about the traffic and not just give them the Dover Amendment exemption because this goes above and beyond uh, you know, the regulations that goes to fire safety and traffic safety. So yeah, I'm just, just looking at a, I'm just looking at a map. If I was dropping my kid off there, I'd, I'd leave, go down North Maple Street, cut over Lorana Drive and get to Rocky Hill. You know, this could affect the neighborhood quite a bit. It could. Probably will, it probably will affect the neighborhood somewhat. You're right. Are you planning any uh, exterior alterations or landscaping? Um, not at this time. It's possible some point in the future uh, we'd look at the warehouse and see if there's a way to convert that to a gymnasium. But I think that's the only thing that we'd be looking at in the future. But we wouldn't be doing that right now. I guess the biggest thing we'd like to we'd like to see, Mr. Alcorn, is you know some kind of a traffic, in, uh, some kind of a. Is, like, is there a someone you could study? Someone who you would suggest would be uh, appropriate. To, is that something a, a 
you know, Berkshire Design does, or is there some other company that does this kind of stuff that would be appropriate resource? Yes, yeah, Berkshire Design can do that. They're one of, one of the companies that one of the locals that can do that. There's there are others. If they if Berkshire Design doesn't feel they're up to it, they certainly know who's who's a player. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they could recommend you. They could recommend somebody else if they're busy. All right. Any other questions or comments for now? It'd be great if you could build a bridge to 116. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am told that there was somebody else who was looking at the property and basically they gave up because they couldn't get access to 116. So the, yeah. I don't, there's wetlands there, so I don't think that's going to happen. So... Um, okay, I'll I'll work on having uh, I'll ask Berkshire who they recommended to do that, and we'll get back to you on that. Um, and I guess the, you meet on the um, you'll meet on March nineteenth. I think is the next meeting you have. Is, well, March. Uh, we meet the first and third Tuesday of the month. Okay. The only reason the March the, the third Tuesday is the public hearing because the first Tuesday is a voting day and we can't hold public hearings, but we can meet and still discuss things. Okay, and I'll try to get it to you by the first Tuesday, just so that we have clarity if there's any issues about this. Okay. Um, anything else or are we all set? I think that's about it. Okay, thank you gentlemen and ladies. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Um, okay, next was Bill Hello Hill. From PB squared. Yeah, you're muted. For this. Hmm? Doesn't look like I'm muted. Hmm? Yeah. Now oh. we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so I've uh, electronically submitted the materials that I was asked for, and hopefully you have access to those. And I'm not quite sure what happens next. So you just, tell uh, me. just tell us the property address. It's 81 Rocky Hill Road. What was it again? 81, 81 Rock, okay. Rocky Hill Road. So it is Stone Soup Farm is the major occupant of the property. my calendar as handy as I should. So um, just want to tell you when when we'll get a uh, So this is the third Tuesday of February. So we can plan to have the um, administrative review scheduled for Tuesday, the 19th of March. And we will circulate what you have filed with us as appropriate. You would, uh, Bill, you would communicate to me that I should get uh, five paper copies of all of this material. Also, uh, you uh, to you all, you recommended dropping them off with Kayla, who I can see is here in this meeting. And Kayla, I'll be in touch about when's a good time for that. Uh, this week's complicated, but probably next week uh, early, if that works for everyone. Sounds good. Thank you. You said you'll drop those copies up in a town hall, Mr. Kello? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I suggested he drop them off with Kayla since she is uh, now the land use coordinator. So. Okay. 
rather than just leaving it in the mailboxes and okay. hoping that it doesn't get moved by someone else. Okay, you have initiated it. I don't. I guess no one had any questions from what I had sent around, so uh, we're good. I haven't looked at the plans. How many? How many panels will be included on that? Um, it is fourteen point five eight kilowatts of DC power. Um, thirty six. Okay, it's a residential scale. Yeah. project it is adding to one that's already there it is entirely invisible from the road because it's behind greenhouses okay and it will not obstruct the view of the holyoke range <laughs> sure oh key no key 100 positive <laughs> Been there, checked it out myself. Uh, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> Wise man. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're all set. Uh, yep. Thank you. We'll see you on the 19th. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. All right. Next in was uh, Tom Corbett. I don't know if you had something new or you just wanted to see what we were going to be talking about. Yeah, Bill, I'm just here to listen along. Okay. Okay, then uh, Jesse Brecklebaum. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I was uh, just dropping into file on behalf of Valley Solar for the Six Maple Avenue ground mount project. Okay, and I think I just sent that around as well um so you just get your paper copies to kayla and uh, i guess we'll see you on the 19th as well all right sounds good any questions for me at this time no, that's how many panels will yours? Uh this one's twenty panels for the ground mount portion. Okay. We're actually doing a hybrid roof mount, ground mount, but yeah. Okay. <coughs> Fine. See you on the nineteenth. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Kyle Fennell, you are up. Good evening, board. How are we tonight? Good evening. Good. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it looks like March is getting busy, but uh, uh, I do have a little bit of business tonight. Uh, we have the latest version or the next version of the planning board rules and regulations to review. Um, and I believe everybody got that uh, at the end of last week. So um, you've had a chance to look through it. Um, tonight, I'd like to just go over kind of what we what uh, was revised based on our last meeting and then get into some new sections and then talk about uh, the next steps. Right. So, uh, hang um, on a sec. Let me. Yeah, whenever you're ready, Mr. Dwyer. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> I to do is to authorize you to share. Okay, you you may share. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we should be seeing the draft document now. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, 
So our first major change uh, started by making uh, a little adoption clause here, make it nice and bright up at the title page so everybody's clear when this is going to get done uh, or when these will go into effect, uh, quickly identifying the version. Uh, the next comment was in section 2.1, planning board duties. Uh, I added a quick little clause here, just in no particular order, just to recognize that we're not prioritizing this list of tasks. This is just kind of a comprehensive catch-all of the responsibilities that the planning board is authorized to carry out. But in section H, we started to break down uh, special rules and regulations assigned to the planning board within the zoning bylaws. So there were existing a couple of sections that we had started on, such as home occupations, uh, erosion, sediment control, inclusionary zoning. And so what I did to start building on this is uh, looking through this uh, use table in the zoning bylaw and then looking at um, special permit reviews that were pulled out that had kind of special additional um, uh, uh, language and ordinance. Uh, I started making a list here and then pause just to make sure that this is where we want to be and if there's anything else that we want to add to this. So we now have, uh, we would likely have a small section on subdivision rules and regulations bed and breakfast facilities, farmland preservation, accessory apartments, senior housing, solar energy systems, and if there are any additional ones, because there were some sections such as um, new construction over the uh, 350 feet of elevation. I didn't know if that's something that we wanted to make sure we call out here in a special section, um, but I'm open to feedback at this point. Are these sections where the text of the bylaw says, and the planning board shall adopt rules and regulations? Um, so yeah. I know we, we have it in some. Um, right. Um, I did not verify with each one of these sections, each one of the sections in the uh, ordinance that it says so, okay. um, but it, each of these has been elaborated upon beyond just the special permit review process within the bylaws. So based on that, just starting this quick list to, to identify all of those uh, particular circumstances that you think the board would want a quick refresher in your rules and regs just to kind of walk you through it. Well, the one that strikes me glaringly is subdivision rules and regulations. So uh, they can be adopted from time to time. That's what Bill is referring to. And I don't think it's in any, any particular section, but it's right. in. Right. So, so subdivision rules and regulations is a standalone booklet. Correct. True. True. Okay. And that comes from a different, uh, that's from our chapter 41 authority and not our chapter 40A authority. Right. So um, point. I think what we'd specifically like to hit in a section like this mm -hmm. is the portions of the bylaw which specifically authorize us to adopt further rules and regulations. Site plan approval, I know, does that. I'm not sh I know some others do. I'm not sure they all do. Okay. So I'd like to be sure we hit those that we hit. so we have regulations. The others are primarily special permits, right? So I don't know as they need to be called out separately. Okay. But some of these have been on the books. We've we've had authority to adopt regulations to implement to further implement site plan approval for, for for forever and we haven't done anything. So right. those are the priorities I'd like to. Okay. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. 
because we can prioritize those. And that will also, again, this list is going to be kind of directing those additional sections that we want to make sure are included in this document. Um, so that is helpful. And I will cross-reference the zoning bylaw and any, uh, I'll double check the general bylaw just to verify that there's no special authorities or I capture all the special authorities. So th there is another section in here about special permits, isn't if I recall. Yes, yes, down at the bottom, or yeah, section nine is just like blanket special permits. Okay, so in that section, right. you could include, you know, special our special permit jurisdiction, special permit jurisdiction of the planning board includes, and then you can list the ones that are special permits, but not not where we are specifically required to adopt further rules and regs. Right. That sounds good. All right, then I'll proceed um, and we'll just move along. Um, because some of that list will, I think, end up in that section for special permit. Um, so moving on to page five, section 2.4 regarding the clerk. Uh, added a short little description, clerk shall distribute materials relevant to board business to all members of the board prior to scheduled meetings, and the clerk shall hire on behalf of the board consultants for or outside counsel when deemed necessary. I believe that covered a, a couple of general con uh, thoughts that were shared in our last meeting. Um, I'm not sure about the clerk shall hire on behalf of the board. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I would just delete that sentence. Oh, entirely? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, do you need this second one? It was kind of just floating around. I didn't know if we wanted to retain that as well. It's highlighted or my cursor's on it. The board may hire a clerical secretary to carry out some or all the aforementioned duties. I don't know if we need that. I don't think it hurts to have it. It's yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't hurt to have it. But yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay. All right. We'll leave it in just to just to have it in case. Uh, I think the next little change was we wanted to make sure that uh, here, section two point eight, regarding enforcement, the planning board has no authority to enforce the requirements of the zoning bylaw. The planning board encourages residents to direct concerns or complaints to the duly appointed zoning enforcement officer which I'm pretty sure is the building inspector. Is that accurate? And is that the way you want to direct that type of uh, comment or complaint? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, just unhighlight that so I know that it is. But one, one of the, the nuances of that particular paragraph would be uh, there has been in the past a occasional lone ranger on the planning board that will take it upon themselves to direct uh, corrections be made that are in violation. Uh, and we've kind of adopted something that this is brought before us as a total board hmm. will recognize that there are some uh, deficiencies and we will, as a board, vote to send it to the zoning enforcement officer. This may be redundant, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. What do you what do you guys think about it? No, I, I, I think that's a worthwhile 2.8 2 is worthwhile. Spells out very clearly that there are no lone rangers in the planning board. I think it doesn't prohibit us from taking a vote that we believe there may have been a zoning violation. Um, right. But okay. I think we do want to encourage people, if at all possible, to bring their concerns directly to the zoning enforcement officer. So the way it is, is you think it's fine, Bill, then? I think it's fine. Okay. That's... All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, moving right along then, uh, I think that was it until we get into, yeah, uh, section five. So this is where we get into some new text. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Dwyer, 
and Mr. Chair for sharing those resources with me. Uh, so first, I, I just wanted to say one thing here. Yep. I, I didn't object to the text you had previously. Okay. So what I would like to do is have maybe a 5.2 peer review process, 5.2.1, which is the language you have here now, the preferred method. Okay. And then a 5.2.2, the alternate method. Okay. So I will reinsert what was there, which is the very standard, you know, process of uh, having an account and charging fees uh, and doing all that. We'll put that as a secondary or an alternate um, process. So all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what I, that's what I had been trying to get at because that that is the st a statutory method, right? Uh, it's just yeah. that we 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 have a way that we like to do it better. But if someone's going to get, um, if we're, we're going to have a problem, we have a fallback method. Okay, that's fair. Uh, are we okay with still just having five point two called project peer review process? Yeah, and then 5.2.1 preferred method, 5.2.2 alternate method. Okay, that sounds great. All right, thank you. Uh, were there any thoughts on this language for the preferred method? Is it is it accurate enough, uh, clear enough? Uh, I, I think that's that spells out what we do. Okay, all right. Good to hear. Then I will uh, reinsert those omissions for the next version. Uh, 5.3, I updated this table uh, based on the latest version, uh, which I'm sorry, I didn't put a date in there. I thought I did. Um, apologies. Uh, but I did have one question just to verify. I just wanted to make sure I was reading this accurately. Uh, where I highlighted for uh, preliminary subdivision applications over 10 lots. Is that just $13 per lot period? Or is that the $162.50 plus $13 for all the lots over, if that makes sense? It's $162.50 plus the extra money per lot. All right, so it's $162.50 plus $13 per lot over Correct. Correct. 10. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's. Could I suggest that we move the fee schedule itself to an appendix so that we don't have to change the pagination every time we edit the fee schedule? Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I think that's um, a wise choice if that's what the board wants to do. Yeah. yeah. So under planning board fee schedule, just say see appendix, whatever you want to call it, one, two. Yeah, we'll, we'll put this one up the top, appendix one. That sounds good. All right, thank you, gentlemen. So there were no changes for uh, section six or seven. I see seven four, I apologize. Uh, did just clarify this, uh, just said C section 2.4 uh, in terms of hiring outside consultants. Um, uh, preliminary review, there are no changes there. And then I believe we're ready to jump into section nine, if that's all right. Um, so section nine uh, generally covers um, the process for special permit review. Uh, I believe it's accurate 
in terms of, you know, it's all the reference to the governing laws. Um, yeah, 9.2 is where you can put the various. Right, yeah. Iterate the special permits that we have authority over. Okay. Just going to add that there for a reminder. Uh, and then a quick word about the applicant or who, who may be an applicant. There was yeah. a reference there to the town planner that we probably should address. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Good eye, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Let's see, it is recommended that all new applicants be reviewed by the planning board prior to filing to ensure their correctness, completeness, and clarity. Is that sufficient? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to reference back to, there is a section on like a preliminary meeting. Do you want to reference back to that? Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. You know, see, see, whatever. Yeah. It's actually two separate things. One is, this is consistent with our requirement that things be filed with the board so we can review it for completeness mm -hmm. because the town clerk can't review it for completeness. Right. Um, so, um, so we're both encouraging a preliminary talk like you saw tonight where Mr. Alcorn came in and said, this is what we're thinking of doing. Do we have any problems? And then um, the um, the actual filing should be at a meeting as well, in case there are questions, right, or deficiencies. <laughs> so moving on to nine four special permit application process. Um, Just to say. Spent application forms are available upon request to the planning board. On request. Thank you. Right? To the planning board. Request to. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, date of submission. Uh, that date is when a copy filed with the town clerk. Um, number of copies for special permit review, three standard copies. That two. seems to be enough. Yeah. Um, large cut, three large ones and two eight and a half by 11 seem to be adequate lately with all the electronics that we've been able to send around. Uh, right. Let's specify one complete electronic file. Thank oh, you. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I would start with that. You would start with one, one complete, complete electronic file in PDF format and All right. Uh, filing fee reference back to. Uh, um, wait a minute. Each copy of the petition. What do you mean by the petition? The drawings. What's a, what's a petition? How do you define petition? Good question. Uh, I would believe that would that would need to be. Um, I would think that that should read any of the um, application. Just put application. application. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where that came from. But the because the, the the drawings, the big, the large size drawings, do not have to be folded. They can be rolled. Okay. So then, for those, uh, yeah, for anything that might be tabloid size or larger, in between. Okay. Um, project uh, peer review 
you know, point them back to the earlier sections. Uh, I'll, they go back to the reduced size. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Instead of eight and a half by 11, make that 11 by 17. Right. You like the tabloid size. All right. Um, filing fee, we'll change that to uh, direct anyone to the appendix. I think you could still go back to section 5.3 and that'll direct people to the appendix. All right, yeah. Uh, then other permits and variances. The applicant shall list on the application, provide copies of all variances, permits, and other approvals previously issued. Um, and a list of any variances, permits, or approvals required. The list should include, but not be limited to. That's accurate for everyone. That looks clear. And then the additional note at the bottom just encourages applicants um, to um, submit other permits concurrently, which I think is just best practices for everybody. Yep. Okay. You want to change petition to application. All right. right. Thank you. Is the application defined? Uh, not in this document, I don't believe. But applicants defined? Uh, applicant is defined, yes, in 9-3, applicant. Okay. Yeah, by property owner, tenant, license, okay. the respective purchaser or other applicant in its documentation. I just noticed that you've got applicant capitalized, but application not capitalized. I just want to make sure we're being consistent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Clarify that. Um, back to Mike, if you just go back, Kyle, for a second. Yes. We go applicant. back seven, six, by four. Oh, That's thanks. four. Uh, that that is the definition of the application, Mike. Okay. Okay. It's the it's the official application form and any additional materials as required in the bylaw. So should that then be application and not applicant? Nine three. Oh. No, you, you, the application can be filed by, that's defining who the applicant is. Yes. Okay. So I think that's correct. Right. So 9-3, defining who can submit an application to the board. 9-4, clarifying that procedure and what uh, entails a complete application. Yeah. Okay. Uh, data submission, number of copies, other permits and variances I believe we're clear with. Uh, review criteria. So the board shall use the review criteria found in section 2.2, I'm sorry, 6.2.2 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw. Um, applicable criteria found in these rules and regulations and any other sections of the zoning bylaw in reviewing and making a decision of applications before it. Does that seem good? I think we probably want to uh, also just reference, uh, what is it, 40A section six? Okay. Uh, you referenced it previously in the preamble to section nine, so. Right. 
I just say a review criteria found in Massachusetts general laws, uh, comma, section 6.2, uh, Yeah, so just cut what you just put in. Yeah. Cut and then paste it uh, after the words review criteria found. Yep. And yeah, fine. Just let, let Mass General Laws just. All right. That's fine with you. That's that's that should be fine. Okay. Just to cover all the bases. Just gonna save that before I make a mistake. Oh, uh, all right. Voting requirements for special permit requires four to approve. Accurate. Uh, First sentence is correct. Yeah, and then I wanted to just verify this one um, because with the Mullins rule, right, we'll need to recommend this. We're intended at the public hearing uh, or can certify compliance with. So, uh, or you say concerted? And certify. Can certify. And certify compliance with, um, and then it's I don't I forget what the statutory reference is. You can put in the Mullins rule for now, but I think we probably should tie it into. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll make statute. sure to verify that. I can't remember that number. Uh, not that good yet. Okay. Um, okay, so make sure that that's clear. Uh, appeals, any person aggrieved, of course, um, has the right to appeal according to Section 17 of the Zoning Act. Um, does Section 17... Does Section 17... Special permits. I would say this. Special permit process. Um, you appeal the planning board decision to the court. Oh, okay. Not to the zoning board of appeals. I'm not sure what section 17 says. Is that correct, Mr. Dwyer? Yes, yeah, 17 is the appeal from the dial of a special permit. Okay without regard to whether it's a planning board special permit or a ZBA special permit. Okay. So then that's accurate. Okay. That's accurate. Okay. All right, then it seems section nine, uh, just a couple of things to clarify, uh, but minor revisions, any missing thoughts or we want to take one last look at it. Hearing known. We'll you know, on. I think I we might want to add just in governing laws, um, site plan approval is a special permit governed by after site plan approval is add a special permit. It, it's, it's a little quirk of that goes back to some case law. This, this is a relic from 25 years ago, but site may, plan may approval, you may want to say special site. This is important. Site okay. plan approval is a special permit process. Site plan approval by itself is not a special permit. Because when we made a special permit process, they used to appeal it. It was just a mess appeal it to the building inspector upon issuance of a building permit. And we made it, when we made it a special permit process, the attorney general was very clear that the process to appeal it 
is a spe is through the courts. However, site plan approval by itself is not a special permit. It is just a process to appeal. It. I'm not quite sure how we word that. Um, I don't know if we explained it to you what used to be, Kyle. Uh, sure, yeah. Well, years ago, special permit, site plan approval was originally a review process. I planned review, correct. Right. Okay. And when the re, when the special review was approved, you appealed the planning board decision to the building inspector upon issuance of a building permit. Well, it's not unusual for somebody to get approval and not seek the building permit for a year or two. Right. Yeah. In the meantime, the people that want to appeal it can do nothing. And the developer is running a risk of putting all this money and time into construction only to have it appeal to the building permit, which then go to the ZBA, which ultimately could end up in the courts. And that process is extremely cumbersome. Yeah. So meanwhile, neighbors are bugging the building inspector. You can just see what this entails. By making it a special permit process, the build we the planning board gives approval, it's filed. There's 20 days to appeal it. It's appealed or it's not. Everybody knows what's going on. It's very clear, cut and dry. And they still can delay construction for a period of time, a year, two, whatever it may be. But in the meantime, at least everybody involved, both those against it and for it, had their chance to appeal when the thing was filed and they were notif they're notified in writing when right. it's when it is this when the uh decision is filed. When it's filed with the when the building inspector gets a building permit, it's it can be a quiet process. Nobody is notified. That's why these people were bugging the building inspector. Yeah. And it was, you could just imagine the, the see cumbersome, how cumbersome this became. Yeah. And we had to do something. And that's why we did this. Yeah. No, that that's a helpful context, Jim. So yeah, that's, okay. that's good to know. Um, okay. So then it's worthwhile to make sure that we're clear in the language here. Um, so then thinking about uh, this section, I uh, believe there's also an appeal section. And if not, we may want to make sure. Yeah, there is. We'll get to it. Um, so site plan approval is a special permit process, right? Um, as described in section 8.2. Um, Request for waivers. Do we have any thoughts on a request for waivers? Um, request waive any or all requirements of the site plan review for external enlargements of less than 10% of existing floor area. Uh, a waiver request does not necessarily require a public hearing. Anyone requesting a waiver sh should support the request with as much detail as possible in the form of photos, drawings, and plans. That's sufficient. I think that's good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, exemptions. It is the responsibility of the property owner or developer to establish that the site work and construction is exempt from site plan approval. Property owner or developer may request a determination of exemption from the planning board at any regular meeting of the planning board. Anyone requesting a determination of exemption should support the request with as much detail as possible. I think that's accurate. Okay, site plan approval application procedures. Those are three steps that we break it down into. Uh, each application shall be submitted in person at any regular meeting by the current owner of record or a designated representative. Applicants or applications are reviewed for completeness by the planning board. Uh, when submitted and a complete application is immediately assigned a date for public hearing. If the application is incomplete, the planning board will advise a representative for, of any deficiencies. One sounds pretty good. 
Um, no application will be assigned a date for a public hearing until it is complete in all respects. Incomplete filings will either be rejected or be held without action at the discretion of the planning board. Two sounds good. Three, attempts to file an application for site plan approval directly with the town clerk are not allowed. Um, the town clerk does not have the resources to determine if the application is complete and will refuse the filing. Anyone who nevertheless insists on filing with the town clerk is advised that the town clerk is not scheduled, will not schedule a public hearing. The town clerk will forward the attempted filing to the planning board, which will consider it at its next regular meeting. If the current owner of record is not present, the filing will either be rejected or held without action. Filing directly with the town clerk does not save time. I think that's a, a strong ending right there. It's clear. Um, any additions for that procedure? Or it seems sufficient. Hearing none, seeing none, moving right along. Um, numbers of copies. Nine. I think, you can, I think you can use the same filing format that you got above with the electronic and the three and two 11 by 17s and just insert that there. Will do. I believe the uh, nine is actually specified in the bylaw. So we probably would want to change that going forward. Right, yeah. I think you're right. I believe that's why I left it in there. I think I did verify that one. I will double check. Um, yeah, if it's... That's a, that's a good point. We should just read. Yeah, whatever I put in here, I'll, I'll verify it is accurate to the bylaw uh, as it is. Uh, but yes, I think um, nine is uh, in this day and age a bit cumbersome. And yeah, so let's go yeah. ahead, change the regulation now. Okay. And just, just copy and paste the same um, from special permits. Yeah. And um, we'll um, change the bylaw. Okay. Oh, well, I didn't come out the way I wanted it. Very trivial point, but where you have three, it's capitalized and probably should be lowercase. All right. thrown off your formatting there, you need to hit a return for 10.7. Yeah. Up, yeah, up one line. No, no, just, just return at the 10.7 and make it, maybe, will it work? Yeah, you knocked off your automatic formatting. Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to have to make a note of that, and I'll fix that later, if that's yep. all right. Everybody, I apologize. Well, that's all right. <laughs> this is your bar form. You can fix it. <laughs> no need to apologize. <laughs> all right, but uh, uh, moving back to the contents here, that is what we want to look at. Um, so uh, Section 8.5 provides detailed specifications for site plans. Planning board recognizes that not all projects subject to site plan approval are equally complex. Planning board may waive any information requirement it judges as unnecessary to the review. It is the responsibility of the property owner to request the appropriate waivers and to establish that the specified information is not required under all the circumstances. Does that seem accurate and thorough? Yep. Okay. Uh, filing fee, again, we'll reference uh the uh new appendix or the section where they can find the appendix uh oh sorry this 10.8 that was older language that i can replace and we'll say c section 
Uh, section 10.9, other permits and variances. Didn't we just have that? I believe this is very similar language, yeah. I think. Oh, maybe. is that in special permits? Not in nine? We had it in nine as well. Yeah, we did have it in nine, nine, other permits and variances. Okay. And I believe it's exactly the same. It looks it, yeah. Okay. That's thorough enough. Review criteria, 1010. The board shall use the review criteria found in section 871, 8.7.1 of the Hadley zoning bylaw, uh, applicable criteria found in these rules, regulations, and any other section. Okay. We need to add anything there, Jim? Uh, yep. Four members. Four. Use okay. the same language for special permits. Yep. Changed. All right. So. Okay, if you just cut and paste the special requirement, for, yes, that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Leaving a note there for me. So I'll uh, bring in that language from section nine for review criteria and voting requirements. And appeals. Yep, same. Okay. Uh, this was inserted, I believe, to, uh, oh, I think this might actually be, this policy statement might be some of what you're getting at, uh, Mr. Chair, just kind of giving some context. Uh, is that helpful to include? Uh, can it be reduced? Um, is it necessary at all? Uh, any thoughts from the board? I think that's maybe instead of saying over the past 10 years, simply leave yeah. out 10 and say over the past years. Does that make more sense? Uh, I think that sounds good. I believe this came from. Or just say increasingly the planning board has been presented. Yeah, that's true. Increasingly, there we are. I would not bother citing this, the statute. Okay, so here. Yeah, and, and just make that up. Uh, zoning, leave in the sentence, just put a period instead of a colon. Okay. Or you could add C chapter 40A section 10 after the, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Any last thoughts on a policy, policy statement for site plan review and variances? Looks good. Okay. 
All right. So those were the two sections that I wanted us to get through today. I had made sure that I had reviewed and um, so the next sections that are in here in the document. Um, to my knowledge, were pretty much just blanket copy of existing bylaw or ordinance and plugged in. And so what I was, what I'm thinking of doing moving forward um, to meet the priorities of the of the board, um, I would think that all the sections after section ten are the. Um, any of the circumstances where the board has uh, additional rules or regulations to articulate and adhere to, uh, you're authorized to, to manage. So that short list that we will clarify in section 2.1.8 will then list the, the next series of sections. Ideally, I would like to avoid just copying and pasting existing bylaw and actually get it into a, a more simplified kind of consistent pattern following the site plan review of, you know, general authority, um, any considerations and then review voting requirement appeal and just kind of follow that. Any yeah. thoughts from the board? I, I agree with it. We don't want to, re we don't want to make two copies of essentially the zoning bylaw. Exactly. You know, just very briefly, or at least as briefly and succinctly as you can, simply describe what we what's going on with those because the the zoning bylaw is still there. But site plan approval is referenced throughout the zone bylaw to be used for various things. Right. And so, after section ten in the regulations, I would think you can simplify a lot of the things for the other things like you just said. Yeah. yeah, since they are special permits, that really is covered in Section 9. But the only thing I would want to emphasize, this in Section 11 and however many after that, right. would be only if the bylaw itself required us or authorized us to adopt separate regulations. Right. Right. Then we might want to just address it. Mm -hmm. Um so um, I don't think limited business, I don't think had anything. Um, but I, I, you know, I just don't recall. I know that sometimes the text of the bylaw we adopt comes with that as a as a standard clause about adopting separate regulations. So let's just get a get an inventory of. I, and I don't think necessarily planning on doing anything with it for the next meeting, but let's get an inventory of what what bylaws have planning board will adopt regulation sections, and then we can just focus on those. Yes, that that I agree with that. Yeah, that sounds uh, most prudent. Okay. So then that's what I will work towards for this next iteration. Uh, I think there will be um, some of these sections that have been kind of living at the tail end of the document uh, for the time being will get uh, dr drastically reduced because they are the home occupation and the accessory apartments or the erosion. Yeah. Yeah, those are just copy and pasted. So that will, those will just get um, taken out and simplified if they're necessary. Um, I did have a general question, um, just taking the um, limited business um, as an example. Um, are there graphics, any additional appendices that you might want to? include i know we have our uh, fee schedule but would you like to have an appendix that is um your current list of um we did problems? adopt uh village center overlay district design standards okay i believe that's where these came from 
But okay. I am, yeah. Okay, so I'll make sure to include that village center design standards. I think I have that saved as a separate. Okay. Uh, yeah, any saved just uh, um, a document that just has the images or anything like that, that would be helpful. Um, but I believe that's all I had for today. And it sounds like I have clear directions for our next iteration. Um, a couple of cleanup edits that are lingering that I had highlighted or left a comment on. Um, copying and pasting some language from section nine to section 10, uh, clarifying that the inventory of bylaws with uh, planning board will adopt uh, rules and regulations. And then that will guide those sections moving forward. Is that accurate? Everybody seems in agreement. Uh, would you like me to bring this back in early March? I'm, I have March 5th on my calendar, but for a different topic, would you like to do both? Uh, yeah, we have a, um, we have an opening. We had a special permit public hearing scheduled for the 5th. And because it's an election day, we can't have a public hearing. Right. So um, that would be great if you could come back. Yeah. Uh, I plan to be there. Uh, Ken Comia is, is it intending to attend as well for the fifth because uh, we'll have some um, some information regarding the DLTA project, the 40R uh, kind of inquiry. Um, so I have been assigned that project, so I'll be managing it. Okay. Um, and um, on the fifth. And the intention is to bring a draft scope of work uh, based on what we've discussed in previous planning board meetings um, and from the language that you all used in the application. Um, and then we can talk through that and then kind of articulate a little bit more clearly what we'd like that project to, to proceed uh, forward for the rest of this calendar year. And um, and then I'll have the next iteration of this draft. Okay. Could you get rid of your share screen? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, so we can all see each other. Yeah, I. That's okay. Hidden that to try to make it easier, and then I forgot I was still sharing. So thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, so we regarding the DLTA DLTA grant. Mm -hmm. This is for the planning board. I would like to nominate <clears throat> Mark done as the chairman of that committee on behalf of the planning board to lead that. Second. I've talked to Mark. He accepted. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not drafting him. <laughs> he, he's accepted that responsibility. Um, I think it'd be good for him. I mean, I'm Bill and I are on tons of committees and meetings now, and I don't think Mike or Joe want to be leading that if I, but I could be wrong. So um, I've asked Mark to lead it and he's accepted. So we've got a motion, a second to make, keep Mark as the lead. Is, it, is the, And then you can explain at the March 6th meeting what's required, Kyle. I'm assuming this is a committee. Yeah, we typically work with a committee okay. uh, and then we'll bring uh, a, a final presentation to the board. And then that final presentation, I suspect will have a recommendation or two. Okay. So, Who seconded um, that? I did, Bill. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on that? Questions, disagreements? Unless you want to lead it, Bill. No, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a motion, a second to um, have Mark lead the DLTA recently awarded grant. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Era with Mark Epson. He's got a bad chest cold, so he couldn't make it today. That's why. Um, I will. Should we wait until the March 6th meeting to start 
um, advertising looking for members of what they want to be, Kyle, or, or I'm, I'm hesitant to jump too quick until we find out exactly what's required and how many members are normally good for this thing. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, let's, if that's all right with you, Mr. Chair, we'll, we can pause. And yeah, just, it's, it's two yeah. weeks away, so it's not, it's not, it's not a long distance away as the next meeting. Right. So, okay. Um, but please, in the meantime, consider, you know, it, what the planning board would think is a good representation of, of you know, constituents and stakeholders in the community that you want to uh, consider. Yeah, I mean, committee. typically, <laughs> we don't have a lot of choice because most people, I mean, who knows the interest that will be shown for this? I, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, we may get. Two people volunteering, we may get 20. I really have no idea. We don't obviously we don't want a committee of 20, but uh depending who applies, then we can make a decision from there. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. It, this cannot be a planning board agenda. Pardon? Well, why does that have to be thrown out to the community? It's like uh we're abdicating our responsibility. Do, do you want to be meeting? more frequently to discuss this this well, is probably going to be at least going to be meetings a month in, what we don't know what's going to be involved well that's why we can wait until the march 6th the march 5th meeting and see what it is okay yeah okay yeah if that's all right uh yeah. mr Drognik, Drognik, excuse me um yeah i i i can have a for the march 5th meeting we'll have a clear kind of scope of work, yeah, um, yeah exactly that articulate that, and there there are more frequent meetings involved. Um, it was um, kind of the assumption on our part that this type of work is best done with a subcommittee outside of normal business hours. Happy to incorporate regular reporting back to the right. planning board, of course. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Do you, have, do you have anything else, Kyle? Uh, I have nothing else to report at this time. That's fine. You just you can you can hang out. I just want to make sure we covered all the, everything you need. That's all. So Thank I you. just shot around a copy of the uh, village center overlay design guidelines. Thank you to everyone. Okay. Except I forgot you, Kayla. I replied to Kyle's, uh, so I'll send you a copy too, so you know what we've got. I do have two invoice, two invoices to pay. Um, one invoice is for the zoning amendments that are going to be published. I think has they were one was already published, but for the uh, annual town meeting, um, the amount is five hundred twenty dollars and sixty eight cents. Make a motion to pay. It. We have a, we have a second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes four zero one absent. And then we have another one for six hundred seven dollars and forty six cents for the site plan approvals for the uh, Subaru dealership and the battery storage. And both these are all going to be held on the nineteenth of March. Total again is six zero seven point four six. Move okay. for the day. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion passes four zero with one absent. Um regarding the battery storage, I've rewritten it and passed it around to the members of the board. I should give you a, a copy, Kyle. I think I, I did not include Kyla either. Not that you want to see it, but if you do, I'll give it to you. Um they are both virtually exactly the same. The only difference is one permits um, batteries or energy storage in the aquifer, one does not. And we need to decide which one we want to go with because if it's too restrictive, the, the Attorney General could turn it down for that. We talked about that at our last meeting. So we don't really need to decide that, I don't think, today, but we will need to decide it either at the next meeting or at the 19th, which one we want to put forward. And the big, uh, what I've done is 
require spill containment for any liquids, period. And 110% capacity, which is a standard measure for spill containment for chemicals. I come from the chemical industry, that's where that's from. Um, but I also referenced three state and federal requirements on design of spill containments. These spill containments specifically uh, mention oil, oil containments, but uh, we can modify, I, I said we're just gonna modify that to include any chemicals, not just oils. And it's, it's those things are, let's just say cumbersome. Um, they're very detailed on what's required, not so much how to do it, but what is required to be done. And uh, they seem to be fairly comprehensive, for lack of a better term, as far as keeping chemicals off of the ground. What about noxious gases, Bill? I mean, Jim, Pardon? what Is about that? noxious gases? Wasn't that what that the damage to those fire truck uh, fires in Arizona? It wasn't liquids. It was noxious gases. Hello, you froze up. Well, wasn't there a list, Jim, when we were uh, that the state had for chemicals that were not allowed in the aquifer protection? Yes. And I remember one of them was dental x-rays and uh, yeah, is the solution. They don't have those anymore, but uh, yeah. And, and I specifically mentioned all things. Also, it mentions that any chemicals used for cooling must be non-toxic. So they can't use ethylene glycol. They're going to use propylene glycol if they're using a cooling liquid like for antifreeze. Um, it mentions no toxic chemicals other than the batteries themselves are permitted. But Jim, see the amount of the amount of liquid in most of the batteries is very small. It would fall under the very small quantity generated because these most most lithium ion batteries contain maybe trace amounts of liquids. They're not like a car battery that has a whole amount of, of acid in it. These have very little liquids from what I understand in it. Roughly oh. how many chemicals are included in the state uh, regulations that we adopted? Remember, it was a, a huge number. I mean, like not like three or four, but like 30 or 40. Did it again now? You know, what uh, under the state regulations, what were considered hazardous within the aquifer protection district? It, it, there's no um, standard answer for that. It depends on the chemical. It varies all over the place. Well, that's, see, that's, we have to be aware of that. So if we, for example, if we get shot down by, you know, the uh, attorney general, yet they approve the bylaw that has all these other uh, chemicals in it, uh, or does would not allow these other chemicals in it, that would be a, I don't think we yeah. have to. I'm just reading something on Google here. I just put lithium battery dangers. Maybe I prompted them, but it says lithium ion batteries are known to unexpectedly reignite without warning minutes, hours, or even days after all visible fire has been put out. Lithium ion batteries can enter an uncontrollable self-heating state. This can result in the release of gas, cause fire and possible explosion. Now, if you got a battery in a Tesla, that's one thing. The mass is a lot less than one of these things, okay? We're talking massive explosions of these things blow up. Know that. That is a fact. Well, why take the risk? Like the guy That's in uh, the and the Godfather said, why take the risk? <laughs> because the state is saying we can't say no. I don't think they did. Where do you? 
our our attorney said that our bylaw doesn't include battery storage. Well, where does the where does the state say you can't say no? And we're not saying no. We're saying, Chap huh? Chapter forty. Chapter 48. Well, I'm willing to take the risk and, and let them come after them. We're just trying to protect the good people of Hadley. No. Anyways, they've already said no to Wendell for the same thing. No, no, it was not. Wendell, like Wendell prohibited any storage facilities any place. We have not done that. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, Mike. I thought you were talking of not putting the bylaw forward. You don't only talking oh, no. about keeping it out of the aquifer. Okay. All right. No. Well, we can we can discuss that at uh, at the March nineteenth public hearing. Okay. See, see which one we want to go forward with. What I do. So. Anything else? I have nothing else. Do you have I, anything, Mr. Dwyer? What about a meeting of the uh, housing trust fund? We haven't had a board of trustees meetings for a long time and i think it's required at least once a year right bill you need to have one a year yep i mean we can just open it and close it i don't think uh do we have does it have a chair i think uh what's his name is no longer chair is he uh no uh christian stanley was chair but he was not reappointed by the select board at the last round of appointments so right now, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund are the five members of the planning board and Molly Keegan from the select board. Well, maybe we should just drop a note to the select board to apply, appoint a new chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund so we can have a meeting, open it and close it. We appoint, we appoint the chair. We appoint the chair. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah. Um, want me to post a meeting? That, that just that, that can go to newspaper, doesn't it? Just a posted meeting. Uh, no, it just gets posted as um, at um, with the clerk. Okay, it's not a public hearing. I will. How about if I post that for the uh, first meeting in March? It's not a public hearing. It's just a most just a meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we can have that as so uh, just I don't not to get ahead of ourselves, but um, um, the um, we will have to uh, on the fifth, we'll have to move to continue in the green. Right. To another date. Uh, and then on the 19th, we're, uh, we, Belize was not going to be ready. Belize is going to ask for continuance, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, we could, we could talk. I don't want to prejudge. We could talk about it. I guess theoretically we could move in the green from the 5th to the 19th and then Belize from the 19th to sometime in April. Right. So we're not actually doing anything. We're just making sure that we leave room. Right. So we will have PVPC and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Right. And um, okay. I did it. I did let the abutters know for in the green that we would not be having the public hearing on the fifth. Okay. Yeah, saw that. Okay. Great. Anything else from anybody? Anything, Tom? No. How about the other? How about the boss? Anything? <laughs> okay. Anything, Kyla? No. Very good. Motion to adjourn. 
Well moved. UMass, UMass is up by 17 points. I just saw on TV. Okay. Oh, Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth. Is that a second, Michael? That was the yes. second. All in favor. <laughs> We're up by 20 now. Jesus. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. aye.